Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another random, I guess, unmailboxing video. So I was on eBay recently and I'd noticed um, basically a reseller from an estate sale had put up a few technical bits and um, these actually caught my eye. And if you can see here, it says they're readout projectors. And these were fairly cheap. Now, these are IEEE, um, you know, incandescent readout displays, basically. And they usually aren't very cheap at all. Even these symbolic ones, which are the cheaper ones, usually go for a good, like, 30 to 50 bucks. If you get, like, a full numerical one, those can set you back for, like, a single display. It would be, like, about 100 bucks, which is kind of ridiculous. So when they, when they listed um, lots of four of them... You can see I actually ended up buying uh, two lots, and I've o already opened uh, two of the displays just to inspect them and play around with them. But yeah, you can see um, for two lots, I believe it was, I want to say like 40 bucks, something like that. So I ended up spending 80 bucks for eight displays, so about $10 per display. And these were obviously unopened. They, they couldn't test them. They didn't even, the seller didn't really even know quite what they were. But as soon as I uh, read the label, I I knew exactly what they were, more or less. Um, and I took a bit of a gamble because I I tried Googling the part number um, and there was no information about them. So I couldn't find if these were numeric or symbolic. So it is what it is. Hopefully, I, I was hoping when I ordered these that they would have the numbers and I could just use them to build a clock or display. If not, um, there are actually other examples. People have uh, printed their own shadow masks with own custom numbers and characters and all that. So if these did end up not having uh, numbers, then we could go that route. But anyway, I guess we will go through and just open one of these. Now, I wish you guys could smell. I wish, you know... The internet had smell of vision. These smell musty as all must, basically. You can see the date code here. It says it's from uh, July 1st of 93. So it's not even that old, but it must have been stored kind of in a slightly damp uh, area, I guess you could say, because they, they do smell quite pungent, <laughs> I would say. Anyway, let's just go through and open one of these. I don't buy stuff not to open it. I buy it because I want to play with it. So I'll just show you what these actually look like. Now these were actually used in old instrumentation type devices. Um, you can see sort of it's fairly nicely packaged and it's kind of all in one unit. And so you could kind of expect to see something like this in like old um, multimeters or something maybe even military. Now these probably were not used in anything military. They're kind of uh, cheap plastic feeling. Um, the ones that were were used in like heavier medical or military installations, that kind of stuff, were probably made of, um, you know, a lot more robust material. They were probably all metal construction, all that. Anyway, uh, we can see here the back has this interesting kind of spade tag connector, and we could actually remove that. And that'll reveal the connectors on the inside that touch against the bulbs. And yes, these are actually tiny little incandescent bulbs, which is absolutely adorable. You can see the model number there. And on the other side is the label. Uh, actually, this is a model number. I guess this is a serial. Yeah, serial number. So anyway, you can see it's part of the 345 series, 5 volts operation, of course. And all these letters and numbers actually encode what the specifications of, of this uh, readout display are. Unfortunately, all that documentation is, I, I couldn't find it. So there's no way of, of really knowing, I think, as of yet. Anyway, you could see just underneath it says one plane readout, which is what you'd Google for something like this. Now, you can actually see into the display itself um, it's missing the front screen. There would actually be something on the front here to like a frosted piece of plastic that we would project against. Uh, but these are missing them or maybe they never had them. Maybe there's supposed to be a sheet that goes over all of them. I don't know. Anyway, 
we could see the display here and just try to take out one of the bulbs and give you just just how small these bulbs are oops as i drop one this is a bulb <laughs> these are absolutely adorable um yeah they're like those tiny little uh grain of wheat style bulbs they have a nice little base on them and that's actually how they conduct so obviously the the rear terminal is one connection and all of them are on this kind of block which acts both as a heat sink as well as an electrical conductor um, with one of um, the pins actually touching that to conduct through but yeah we'll just put that back in and oh, upside down yeah there we go and that just clips right into place you can see there's like a hex bolt shaped kind of thing going on there it's molded into the plastic case no idea Top is obviously marked as top. But yeah, this is one of the smallest ones. They have ones that are quite a bit larger, and you know they, they're proportionally much longer as well. But this, I believe, is probably one of the smallest ones they ever ended up making. This is one of the latest ones, marked as you know 93. Um, these were developed much, much earlier. I'm not sure the exact date, but I, I think they've been around probably since like 60s or something like that. These were these, these were the one of the earliest display technologies and anyway they're they're super reliable and actually took apart two of them to play around with them and one of them I stuck on a little piece of like uh, sticky paper uh, just to act as the the front display part another one I actually took a piece of uh, clear like two millimeter acrylic and just Kind of fit it in there there's actually grooves to fit um, a piece of plastic and they slide in and I, I actually took advantage of that and i lightly sanded one side now the reason why these displays are really popular still amongst like hobbyists and modders is um you can easily replace the bulbs with just three millimeter leds dirt simple let's see i got a green one here and we can actually test these out just by holding them in the holes. You can see there's a three, a two, a one, a four, a five, a six. This one's blank, there's nothing displayed. An X, a zero, a seven, and that's it. Yeah, so unfortunately it appears this has zero through, what was it, seven, and then an X. <laughs> so, we can't make a full clock out of this without modifying it unfortunately that means um as we won't be able to display eight or nine so we are going to have to go the route of making our own shadow mask and i'll tear one apart right now actually and show you guys but i just want to uh, see so that was with a piece of acrylic you can see with this white piece of paper um it's actually a little bit more well-defined, and the angle of the LED is actually kind of important, um, getting it kind of perpendicularly straight on. And you can see, um, using different different colored LEDs will obviously give you different colored digits. You can see that there. And then if you pull the LED back enough, it <laughs> shows all of them. Another blue, nice white LED, upside down. We have a nice orangish yellow. That looks rather nice. Red. See that X there? Yeah, I wish this had. Uh, full numerical that would have been nice save me a step but at least now i get to make my own mask uh this is actually uv <laughs> and we already did white so yeah anyway let's just pop one of these open i'll just pop this guy open okay yeah to open these just two flat heads and there are two molded um kind of hex nuts into the case there they're just captive with the plastic so these are actually really easy to open and service. They're kind of <laughs> a bit how you doing. Like you can tell someone sanded these. I did not sand 
these down. So after they molded it, they sanded it, I guess, to fit the clearance for the specification for the case size. Yeah, you can see it just pops open there. Now it's a bit tricky. Um, yeah, just kind of give it a wiggle because there's a bunch of layers in between and just be careful not to lose anything. You might actually have to, yeah, you have to wiggle this little heat sink out. It's kind of holding the two halves together. And it looks like everything popped out on the one side. So here you can see the, uh, actually thicker than I remember. So here you can see the front display. I think that's actually maybe three or four millimeters um, that I stuck in, lightly frosted the one side. Um, I just stuck that in this outer channel here and it just fits perfectly. And you can see the different layers here. So going to very carefully remove the back two layers. There, there appears to be kind of a black colored mask that separates all the little holes. And you can see even on this heat sink part, everything is contoured into that rounded shape so that everything points kind of towards the center concentrically. You can see the like kind of fly eye, fish eye lens there. And each digit gets its own lens, which focuses the light kind of into a center point. And the focal point, obviously, the center point is at right at the back of the display, so everything's in focus. Beyond that, we have another set of lenses, which is kind of similar looking to the first, but this has a metal um, kind of bracket to hold the the um, mask in and you can see this mask now everything's upside down because after it goes through the lenses it flips it right side up again uh, but you can see here 0x7654321 and it's missing two digits actually there's there's two slots that do nothing um oops yeah we're actually gonna have to recreate this one piece and I've actually purchased some um, transparency film. I'm going to try to do it myself. Uh, if not, I know there are a couple sites online you can get um, like 35 millimeter film uh, digitally developed for you. So I can provide them the exact um, size design of a new filter and they should be able to produce it on 35 millimeter film at very, very high quality, very small size. So we'll see about that. That will take some time to get working on. Next up, we have the final couple bits. And here we have another mask. Like They're really serious about keeping light paths separate. So we can see here, they have another mask. They have another lens. And then finally, yet another mask. And I guess these also act as shims to um, kind of keep everything in place when you're inserting it. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Let's see just how the arrangement looks. And this is how it's inserted. Look at that. It's kind of a marvel that all these tiny little lenses are able to create a tiny little projector. <laughs> okay, just got this guy back together. Pretty simple to put together and take apart. Let's see here. All the digits lit up at once. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, we're going to make a neat little clock or web counter or something out of this so now there aren't that many videos on these these are kind of difficult to find and expensive so i really don't see too many people dabbling in these uh one plane readout displays but we're gonna have some fun with them in a future video and i have eight digits total so i can definitely create like a full clock um hours seconds minutes and even have you know one or two leftover with specialized symbols 
So yeah, we can do some really cool things. Now these definitely were not cheap. As I said, I paid about 10 bucks per. Um, so this is definitely an investment, but I think we can create a sufficient mask um, and be able to actually get these to to make some kind of really neat display retro kind of thing going on there. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And um, actually, I wanted to give you guys a huge thanks. Um, everyone who uses the eBay affiliate links, I actually get a small kickback every month um, from sales. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. And actually, that's what helped pay for these displays. I would not normally pay 80 bucks out of pocket on vintage displays that may or may not um, function. <laughs> so I took the risk because I had money saved up from all the... Um, affiliate links that you guys used and I got some money from so huge thanks to you guys you made um, this series of videos possible so once I design the the masks using the transparency film we'll do another video seeing how that works if I can get a high enough resolution on a desktop um, either inkjet or laser printer and if we can't quite get the resolution that we want and have the digits look nice and clear and I'll actually send out externally to get it professionally manufactured. Um, tiny little mask films. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have uh, some interesting ideas of what you would do with one plane readout displays like this, uh, put them down below. Uh, one thing to note, I actually forgot to mention, um, on the displays that I opened, I did have to cut through the top label. It's just like a metalized film label, but it does keep the two parts, uh, two halves kind of together. But uh, yeah, other than that, <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed um, looking at these really weird, kind of neat vintage displays, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.